1967, 40 years ago, was a difficult time for the nation and for Dover. The British government devalued the pound, which impacted on the number of tourists sailing from Dover, and there was a national wage freeze. On top of that, Transport Minister Barbara Castle put Dover Harbour on the list for possible nationalisation. But that didn't seem to worry those who passed through Dover for the Monte Carlo Rally, a big attraction in the town 40 years ago. A storm in October created rough seas and caused a lot of damage at the docks. Dover Castle played host to the hunt that went off in search of the foxes and not a hunt saboteur in sight. Despite the economic gloom, spring was just around the corner with the promise of new life, set off by a sea of daffodils. And in February, despite the chilly sea, Dover ladies took the plunge to celebrate Pancake Day.
for the first time for years a joint service of Catholics, Methodists and members of the Church of England worshipped at the Church of St Mary the Virgin. A £10,000 appeal was launched to restore St Edmund's Chapel in Priory Road and work was in progress on rebuilding the ancient structure. Miss Dover, in 1967, was Mrs. Gillian Windley, and she joined the town's lady footballers who showed the men a thing or two with their footwork. In those days, there were always big crowds to watch Dover Football Club in action at Crabble. Dover had a good year in 1967, ending the year in third place in the Kent Premier League, only a few points behind Sittingbourne in the lead. One of the highlights of the year was a Gymkhana, when hundreds watch huntsmen and their hounds, and lots of children having fun.
Conservatives won control of Dover Town Council, but they voted for Labour's Harold Carr to be mayor. Here he is at the mayor making ceremony at the town hall. Controversy of the year was the decision to impose a one-way traffic system in Dover's main street in May, just for an experiment, an experiment that continued forever. And they started painting double yellow lines to enforce parking restrictions. Remember in those days all the traffic went through the centre of Dover. York Street had not been constructed and there was no Eastern Bypass. But there was peace to be found at Langdon Cliffs where Without parking payment, car drivers could watch the never-ending flow of shipping in the channel. In June, Dover Rowing Club, at their home regatta, celebrated its most successful season since the war. Despite the choppy seas that sank some competitors' boats. Twenty-seven-year-old Rosemary George of Dover became the first British woman to swim the English Channel in both directions. Rosemary, the first Doverian to beat the Channel, made the crossing in dense fog. Another record-breaker was Elaine Gray, twenty-one-year-old librarian from St Albans. Warships of the West German Navy visited Dover, tied up in the Wellington Dock, and the crews received a civic welcome.
A massive 500,000 pound reclamation task was in progress at the eastern docks to provide a concrete apron for hovercraft. Tons of chalk were dug out from the western heights, where a new road was under construction, for infill for the six acres reclamation. More chalk came from London Road River where the road was widened to 33 feet by cutting into the bank. Russell Gardens, as always, attracted visitors and gave youngsters the chance to feed the ducks. There was tennis at Connaught Park and plenty of fun provided for the young. The Wild West ventured to Whitfield for a highly successful fate to raise funds for a village hall. Comedian Roy Hudd was there to join in the fun and games.